Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Beef on a Whack. That's right, you better check yourself before you whack yourself. And hopefully this two-part demo on one of America's greatest unknown sandwiches will help. And don't feel bad if you've never heard of this. Unless you live somewhere between Buffalo and Rochester, New York, there's a pretty good chance you've never seen this before in your life. And in part one, we're going to cover the Weck, which is short for the German Kummelweck, which apparently means caraway roll. And then in part two, I'm going to show you how to do the roast beef and finish this sandwich. But for now, let's get started with the dough. And to do that, we're going to toss one package of dry active yeast into the bowl of our stand mixer, along with about a half cup of our flour and a cup of very warm but not too hot water. And all we're doing in this step is making sure our yeast is active. So what we'll do is we'll give that a mix. We'll come back about 10, 15 minutes later. And if it looks like this and it has kind of a foamy head on the top, you'll know that yeast is alive and we're good to go. And at that point, we can move on to the rest of the ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of vegetable oil. We're also going to add a spoon of white sugar and some salt, of course. We also want one egg white. No, not the whole egg, just the white. And then a little bit of honey. And not too, too much. Maybe like a teaspoon. We don't want this to taste like a hippie made it. And then we'll take a whisk and give that a mix. And that's pretty much it, except for the rest of the flour. By the way, I'm just using all-purpose flour. I believe your finer German bakeries would probably use bread flour for this. But it really does work fine with all-purpose. So we're going to dump in the flour. We're going to place that on our stand mixer with a dough hook, of course. And as usual, we're going to knead that until a very soft, slightly sticky dough forms. And by the way, I'm going to give you a great tip on the blog post about how to always get the perfect texture of dough. But anyway, like I said, we're going to knead that in our stand mixer for about three or four minutes until a nice soft dough forms. Of course, you can knead this by hand. In fact, even when I use a mixer, I always like to knead it a little bit by hand at the end, just so I can get a real feel for it and see maybe if it needs a little more flour or not. But this was perfect. And at that point, we're going to drizzle a little bit of vegetable oil into the bowl. And we'll toss in our dough and give it a little massage. And the only reason we do this is so our dough doesn't dry out while it rises. So give it a little bit of a rub down. And once that's set, let's go ahead and cover that and put it in a warm, draft-free place to double in size. And I just like using a turned-off oven. But anyway, we're going to let that rise until doubled. It might take an hour or two. But when it's done, it will look like this. And by the way, I believe traditionally, this Kummelweck dough is actually left to rise a second time. But you know what? I barely have enough patience to wait for the first rise. So we're going to skip straight to the roll making. And as usual, we're going to transfer this to a floured work surface, flour the top a little bit, and then we're going to press out all the air, kind of flatten it out. And not only are we doing this to deflate it, we also want to press it into some kind of uniform shape to make it a little easier to cut up. And how many you get out of this is really up to you. You can get like 16 little small slider size rolls or eight larger sandwich size rolls. But I'm going to split the difference and make 12 rolls. And then we're simply going to take each of those pieces and form it into your classic roll shape. And you've seen me do this before. I just like to turn the dough, kind of stretching it from the top down underneath. Okay, that's going to give you that classic roll shape. Plus, all your seams will end up on the bottom. And as we do that, we'll just transfer those onto a lined baking sheet. And once our rolls are formed, we're going to go ahead and let these double in size. And you know what? I usually do cover them. But this time I decided to let them rise uncovered just to see what would happen. And it ended up being fine. But anyway, I'm going to pop those back in my still not turned on oven and let those rise for another half hour or so until they're doubled in size. And while you're waiting for those to rise, you could get this ready. That's one egg white with a couple teaspoons of water that I've beaten up. And that's what we're going to use to brush on these rolls so our caraway seeds and salt stick. Okay, so our egg white wash is set. And we'll go ahead and check our rolls, which as you can see have now doubled in size. And then it's time to paint them with our egg white and add the toppings. But before we do... We're going to cut the tops of these. And to do that, I'm going to use a pair of scissors and just simply cut an X at the top of each roll. Now, a lot of people like to just make one straight cut across the top with a knife. That totally works, too. Other people don't make any cuts, but I do like this method. I think it makes it look very cool. You've heard me say it before. People love pointy food. Besides, the way it kind of points upward, I think, suggests a certain divinity. I'm pretty sure that's why churches have pointy roofs. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut the tops of those rolls. And once those rolls are cut, we will go ahead and paint on our egg white. And once those have all been brushed, you're going to go ahead and generously scatter on caraway seeds. And be very generous. And once those wax have been cummeled, or is it cummeled? I'm not sure, but I'm assuming a German person will let me know. And when that's done, we will repeat the exact same thing with large flake salt. I'm just using a large grain sea salt here, which works perfectly. 
But really, any kind of coarse salt's going to work, and we'll sprinkle that over just as generously. And at that point, these are pretty much ready for the oven, except for one last optional step. If you do have a spray bottle with plain water, I do like to mist these very lightly before they go in the oven. Just a couple squirts, very fine mist. Pretend it's a fern. And at that point, we're going to pop those in the center of a 425 degree oven for about 18 to 20 minutes or until they look like this. By the way, it got dark while I was baking these, so I did have to use some artificial lights. But despite that, I think these still look totally amazing. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous sandwich roll that tastes every bit as amazing as it looks. Now, of course, usually right about now, I'd be biting into one of these to test while telling you you have to wait to let them cool. But I can't because this is only part one. And I can't go in for the official taste until this weck becomes beef on a weck. So sorry to leave you hanging. Well, actually, that's not true. I just said that. I'm actually kind of leaving you hanging on purpose. I wonder how they say cliffhanger in German. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it has lots of consonants in it. But anyway, that's it. Our weck roll is done. And I invite you to stay tuned for part two, the beef and final assembly. Okay? So in the meantime, I really do hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info, as usual. And as always, enjoy! Enjoy!